Once you enter the world of mechanical keyboards, it's hard to turn around. As many before me have said, it's a rabbit hole that leads down to the deepest depths of your wallet. However, due to the nature of how products are being released, we get a naturally occurring congestion, with out of stock and group buy being very common things to see when shopping around. Oh my God! This can be quite the buzzkill, but fear not, I myself have been cock blocked by the chastity belts of mechanical keyboards, and I'm here to help you. As much as I'm looking forward to my first group buy arriving, I don't expect to see the thermal before my early retirement in 4055. Until then, I needed something to sink my teeth into, something that's different enough to justify its existence next to the thermal while also being a good training ground to learn more about this money pit of a hobby. So I set out to build a board with parts that were all readily available and ended up with this. This is the Meridian, a 60% split keyboard sometimes also referred to as an Alice-style Mac, made by Prime Keyboards and designed by AI3 Studios. At $370, it's also a very pricey first-time entry into customs, but I always wanted to try out a split. In this video, I want to focus more on the search and the acquisition part rather than the board itself, so if you're more interested in the latter, stay tuned as that video will follow after this one. As mentioned before, when you first enter the realms of mechanical keyboards, you'll discover many amazing looking pieces which are unfortunately almost always out of reach. That's because they all seem to be part of past group buys, and other than hoping for a second run or the aftermarket, there's no way to acquire these. At least, that has been my experience for the most part. So after scouring the interwebs for the past few months, I've collected a few hints and tips which might help you navigate these treacherous waters. This isn't rocket science either, and for many who are more accustomed to these seas, this might be common sense but for those who are starting out like myself, I thought this might be helpful. Every build needs a board. Sometimes you start with it, sometimes you end with it. For me, the Meridian was certainly the beginning, but regardless of the order, you'll have to find one first. An alternative to group buys is trying to catch extras. If you don't know what that is, extras are when vendors or manufacturers order additional units, meaning they will add to the group buy and once production is completed, list it on their respective sites and sell it from stock. You still have to wait for the group buy to end, of course, but given the right timing, you might be able to get something when you see it for the first time. Don't do this though if you've got your eye on something specific, as this is a lot riskier than joining a group buy. I see it more as a happy accident when I come across one. Finding out about these can be a bit tricky too. I'd recommend following the brands and vendors you like on Instagram or join their discords, as I've seen quite a few being announced there. Keeping an eye on this can also be quite time consuming, and even if you do monitor it, you might still miss it, as the stock can go very fast. If you missed the initial group buy and extras, there's still hope for a second round or rerun. But that will require equal waiting times again, and keep in mind that not everything might get a second chance. A lot of times products are released as one-offs, and even if they do have a second iteration, they might slightly differ from their original form, sometimes with improvements, and sometimes just with some cosmetic changes. Worst case scenario, the board or caps you're looking for will never come back, and the only way to acquire them then is the aftermarket. But if you thought the regular prices were insane, I'd recommend steering clear of this alley, unless you really want to take up a second mortgage. <laughs> On the polar opposite are parts that were made to be in stock permanently. A few examples are KBD fans famed Tofu, the NK65 or the Meridian itself among others. Of course, these boards can be sold out as well, but at least you know they'll be coming back. And when they do, you'll be able to get them immediately as they don't go through the normal group buy process. Additionally, you can also check out a great site called thoxstock.com, which tracks what's currently in stock and includes not only boards, but also caps and everything else you might need to complete your build. It's not covering the entire internet, of course, that would be insane, but it's a large enough pool to be essentially spoon-fed via alert mails when something does show up. So, have a look around. After that, we can move on to the ammunition, that is, the switches. To me, the switches are arguably the easiest pieces to find in this journey, but maybe not the easiest to choose, especially if your board isn't hot swap capable like the Meridian. Although you can desolder, that's something that will consume a lot more time and is definitely not as fun, at least I think so. 
Here I'd like to go back to what I said in my Keychron video. The K6 or other affordable hot swap boards are perfect for trying out switches or mechanical keyboards in general. You can get a switch tester, but I feel like those don't really represent a good typing experience. The Keychron doesn't recreate a Meridian either, but it creates a much more solid baseline and won't lead to immediate bankruptcy. Bankruptcy! On my K6, I had the gate run rats, but definitely wanted to try out something new. So I ordered a bunch of individual ones for testing. Many shops offer this, and the price ranges from as little as 50 cents to over a dollar depending on switch. Just make sure that there is enough in stock, otherwise you'll end up being frustrated when you do finally decide on one, but can't actually buy it. Originally, I settled on the Silent Helios V2, which I found very intriguing. A quick excursion here. I didn't know what silent switches were or how they worked, but normal switches or non-silent ones have regular stems made out of a variety of materials depending on the switch. Silent ones, or at least these Helios, have an additional rubber dampener at the top and bottom of the stem, effectively silencing your hits both while bottoming out as well as during their return. Didn't notice. Kinda blew me away to be honest. Unfortunately, the place where I ordered them from somehow forgot to ship them, which is how I ended up with these, the glorious pandas, which were in stock at a local shop. To summarize, try out as many switches as you can before settling on one. I found it to be a lot easier to find switches that were in stock compared to other parts. The only annoyance is trying to find a shop that has a wide enough selection so you don't end up spending a fortune on shipping. There are also so many switches that this can be a bit daunting at first, but trying is the best way to assure that you're not going to completely blow it on your first try. The good thing is, it's kind of the least expensive part if you don't count all the smaller pieces like stabilizers. And it's replaceable, even with a soldered board. Switches are also very subjective, and you'll surely be perceiving these very differently than me. And if you're hunting for a specific sound, they won't get you there on their own either. What you hear in this and other videos is a culmination of a lot of things, even the desk itself. This is the last part of the Triforce, just as important and just, if not harder to acquire, than the board itself. All the resources mentioned before can be used for this as well, including Thog stock. But depending on your board, finding caps is one thing, finding matching ones is another. We have sites like Drop.com, which always seem to have a good base selection on hand, including packs from GMK. Other sites like KBD Fans have more variety, including special kits, as well as more unique looking sets. I left some of my favorite sources down in the description below. If you too know good ones, please do share them in the comments. For the Meridian, I initially couldn't find anything that matched the dark grey color scheme the way that I wanted to, and even when I did, the problem was the split spacebar or the fact that I needed two Bs. After some digging around, I finally came across Domiki, or sometimes called DMK, which is a Chinese company trying to be a more value-oriented alternative to the fabled GMK from Germany. There's some debate as to which one is better and if GMK is really worth the extra dough. I only own one set of each, and comparing the two, I can say that I do prefer the lettering on GMK. Both of them are ABS, but Germany seems to be a tad bit cleaner and more consistent. Like the arrow on the shift key here. It's a bit too thick on the DMKs and doesn't match the rest of the set. Some keys also have a few blemishes, which you won't notice at first, but you'll know it's there once you see it. On the other hand, these have triple shot keys, allowing for two different colors on a single cap. The Army key also has the advantage of being in stock most of the time, like this set I bought here, which was and still is in stock and includes all the specials while totaling around 150 bucks, which is significantly less than something comparable from the competition. It's not the cheapest set by any means, but for what you get, I think it's pretty good. They also have a rather nice selection and I'm quite tempted to get them, simply because you can. As to where, well, you'll have to go through something like AliExpress or even eBay rather than the vendors you're used to, and I do understand if you're trying to avoid this route. But once you find your matching set, you can finally put your feet up and wait for everything to arrive before getting to the most fun part, which is the assembly. Putting everything together is pretty straightforward, and for popular boards, you'll find plenty of build guides right here on YouTube. The most off-putting part can be soldering, but take it from me, a person whose handwriting looks like that of a three-year-old and whose high school substitute teacher once asked if I had functioning hands. I remember she coming over to my desk after an essay asking if I had trouble using my hands for writing. So if I can do it, you can do it. Depending on the board and what's included, you'll also need to get a few extra bits, like stabilizers or sometimes called stabs. For the Meridian, I chose to go with four two-unit ones. I picked Duroc V2s because I heard good things about them and Prime Keyboard had them in stock as well. If you're unsure about what to get, try to find a build guide here on YouTube or check out the shop where you bought the board, as they sometimes have a diagram of the PCB or a layout example that'll help you figure out what's required. For some of the boards, including the Meridian, you can also choose between different combinations, like whether or not you want to use a full-sized backspace or share it with the delete key. 
As the latter was one of the things I missed the most on my K6, I was very happy to be given this choice. The same goes for the right shift key. Keep in mind though, that if you do this, you might need additional steps. Also, not all keyboards come with a PCB, although most I've seen do, a Tofu for example can be purchased with and without one. If you do go this route, you'll have to add an additional step to the process, although that can also be seen as further customizability. Then there is looping, which I would highly recommend after trying it out on this build, but test it first to see if you really like it before investing a large amount of time. After that you can start thinking about modifications. There are some general ones like the Band-Aid one, or more board specific ones like adding a burger mount to the Meridian, which I might try out in the future. Some things are also easier with a hot swap board as they are more flexible for frequent changes. For example, I can't retrofit foam inserts between the plate and the PCB because the switches are holding everything together. So once it's on, it's on, unless I desolder. But that's basically it. With all that being said, and depending on your ambition, it's definitely not impossible to order something that you can actually start building right away. For example, all the parts to build this board are in stock right now. You can even get a white one, which might go great with this modern dog set from GMK. That's also in stock. Links in the description. If you don't mind the waiting times, you can always go the traditional way. There are similar sites to Thogstock that monitor group buys and production progress. It's actually a great way to keep an eye on what might be close to the finish line, which could give you a heads up for potential extras. With that being said, I hope this information helped you and maybe gets you going in this rather peculiar hobby. And like with a lot of custom things, everything that is this customizable will inevitably lead to more exploration. But that's the fun part here. Reaching the end game isn't necessarily the goal, it's to have fun building things and knowledge along the way. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this approach. And as mentioned, we'll have a more detailed look at the Meridian in the next video. Until then, have a good time. Thank you again and see you in the next one. Bye.